When tax season rolls around in the United States, it seems like the entire country just collectively sighs. The process of filing taxes is undoubtedly one of the most frustrating aspects of adulthood. The government is fully aware of what you made and what you owe, but you get to play this fun little game of figuring it out by yourself. And if you're wrong, you could face massive fines or even jail time. Who doesn't love a high stakes guessing game, right? But when Intuit TurboTax made its online debut in 1999, everyone seemed to breathe a sigh of relief for the first time. Prior to this groundbreaking launch, people had been accustomed to their yearly trip to an accountant to file their taxes through good old fashioned snail mail. Now they could do it themselves with e-filing and the revolutionary service allowed them to know if their filing had been accepted a mere 24 hours later, much better than the weeks many had waited for before. Right from the start, TurboTax was making waves selling about 4.2 million copies of the software. Chairman Bill Campbell even told the industry press that one in five federal tax returns were filed using an Intuit product in 1999. It suddenly seemed like everyone's tax headaches were finally going to be soothed at long last. But TurboTax wasn't truthfully the solution to all of our tax needs as we had hoped. And it seemed like they may have been part of the problem. As the company went on its way to sell simplicity to its customers while filing their yearly taxes, they were also actually lobbying the government and they were doing everything they could to keep tax season as migraine inducing as ever. As the federal government worked to create free filing options, Intuit was spending millions of dollars lobbying them against it. Meanwhile, they did seemingly everything in their power to block consumers from ever knowing that easier and less expensive options were available at their fingertips. Yes, it seems that Intuit and TurboTax weren't here to help when they made their historic debut. They were there to make money in any way possible, even if it meant atrociously misleading all of the consumers they proudly claimed they were helping. As the general public went about their way filing taxes year after year, TurboTax was in the background spreading lies, misleading their consumers and lobbying the government to keep the process as painful as possible. And this went on for decades until finally, people started to take notice of what was actually going on behind the scenes. Until recently, most people in the United States turned to TurboTax to fill their April needs without a care in the world. But as lawsuit after lawsuit and federal investigations came blasting onto the scene, the truth is finally starting to come out. What has Intuit actually been up to in the darkness? And are they truly to blame for our April migraines? Well, that's what we're gonna try and find out today. Hello and welcome to The Corporate Casket. I'm the Illuminati and today we're gonna be talking about the company and tax filing software that changed the way Americans file their taxes forever, Intuit TurboTax. US News this very year ranked them their number one service to meet your tax needs and call it an easy to use interface and the best mobile tax app of 2022. Even after everything we're about to talk about today, major corporations launder them as a massive success. If your goal is to cheat the American people and lobby the government to make everything more difficult than it needs to be, then I guess that would be accurate. But I don't really consider those acts to be a sign of a great company, but maybe that's just me. In October, 2019, the fall of TurboTax's perfect image began with a lengthy investigation from ProPublica entitled, Inside TurboTax's 20 year fight to stop Americans from filing their taxes for free. So yeah, that's definitely a promising title. Now, since the beginning, TurboTax knew one thing for sure. Their entire company would be in jeopardy and would quickly collapse overnight if the United States did what pretty much every other major developed country in the world has done long ago. And you know, make tax filing simple for their citizens or even dare I say, automatic. Of course, they couldn't have that happen. So they went out of their way for two decades to make damn sure that it never did. Tucked inside their internal company reports and presentations, they continuously lay out their strategy to fight off encroachment, which is their cute little term for any type of government intervention that would make filing taxes less of a headache for Americans. And their holy grail, the free file program. It's a compromise they and other United States tax filing systems have reached with the country nearly 17 years ago. Launched under George W. Bush's administration, the free file program was the tax prep industry's last ditch effort to avoid Bush's proposal of a no cost online federal tax prep program for the citizens. It was a step that seemed vital for a federal government that was trying desperately to improve their programs and take advantage of the newfound phenomena, the internet. 
To stop the government from single-handedly destroying their entire company's purpose, they compromised, agreeing to provide free online filing for those in the lower income tax brackets. And so with that compromise, the government never built its system and the taxes remained stress-inducing for American citizens for years to come. Their plan worked beautifully, but it was pretty much all a lie. And don't worry, we'll, we'll get to that. Over the years, Intuit TurboTax has spent about $41 million bribing the government, with 3.3 million of that coming in just 2021 alone. Using their revolving door lobbyists, otherwise known as members of Congress who went into lobbying because, you know, money and power, TurboTax was very good at lobbying the government. In 2019, they got incredibly close to making their free file program made permanent by the United States government. That is, until ProPublica released its investigation into what was really going on within the company. As it turns out, TurboTax hasn't been holding up their end of the bargain for quite some time now. So as a tax reform bill went through the house, the free file deal was scrapped and slowly but surely, more news came flooding into the mainstream that showed the true face of America's biggest tax prep services. Now, Congress members are calling for an in-depth investigation of what they call the revolving door scheme run by the company for over two decades. But that seems to be the least of their concerns at the moment. It turns out free didn't mean what everyone thought it did and TurboTax had been scamming the US government and its people for quite some time. Now, everyone has begun to jump on their backs, pressuring them to pay back what they owe and change their ways. Now, I'm sure we've all done it. Tax season rolls around and you begin looking for the easiest and quickest way to file your taxes and hopefully get a hefty return or by sheer luck and determination, find a few deductions that will make what you owe a little less startling. Obviously, you go to whichever one is claimed to be free. You think back to all those times watching Super Bowl commercials, TV ads, or social media marketing and try to remember which company would be the best one. And yeah, TurboTax, that must be the one. Most of their advertising relied on the word free being used over and over again, in a courtroom, through an auction, and even in an exercise class. If there's one thing that you took away from their very repetitive commercials, some of which use that one simple word dozens of times within 30 seconds, it's that the services should be, and certainly seem to be, free. Free, 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 free. free. This would definitely be the assumption, especially since the company promised the fucking federal government that this is the way it worked. Unfortunately, their ads turned out to be just a little bit misleading. When unsuspecting customers signed into their accounts year after year, they found that those free ads weren't necessarily true, at least not for about two thirds of tax filers as of 2020. If you had a 1099, worked in gig services, or had farm income for some reason, then you were going to have to pay for their services. Considering that a little over 57 million people in the US have participated in the gig economy or as freelancers, at least according to Statistica, then that's an awful lot of people that signed up just to be let down. But you wouldn't know any of that until it was time to file. And as the FTC puts it, this was a classic case of bait and switch. Of course, TurboTax knew what was happening, at least according to their internal memos. You know, those little pesky, pesky little things, the things that always seem to come back out and bite you. One of these was actually a PowerPoint presentation that showed that since the website states free, 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 customers were obviously assuming their filings to be free and getting upset when they were forcibly upgraded after agents suggested them for customers when they didn't need it. So yeah, people tend to get upset when you sell them a service they don't need or lie to them in your advertisements. That generally doesn't go over great. Also, the list of illegal things being clearly listed on a PowerPoint presentation in pretty little bullet points just sends me. Like, I don't know why, just like, here we go. And here's the evidence that we broke the law. Like you got to love it. And here it is in PowerPoint. Like it, it's just great. It's, it's fucked up, it's wrong, but it's great. Now, of course, false advertising wasn't the only thing that TurboTax was doing wrong because of course there's more. Remember that free file program that saved the company's ass about 13 years ago? Well, they found some wonderful ways to skirt that too. As it turns out, the company had found a nifty little way to stop its prospective customers from finding a free way to file their taxes too. With just some simple coding to the robots.txt file on their website, the company was able to get Google search results to mysteriously not include their free file service. And isn't that just super convenient? So while they were legally required to offer free services to people in a certain tax bracket, they skirted the rule by simply never letting people find out the service existed. When customers went directly to Intuit TurboTax's webpage and made their way over to products and pricing page, they were again led astray. 
The page claimed that customers would be recommended the right tax solution. Only small problem, they never displayed or even recommended their IRS free file program, which again, they promised the federal government they would do. As ProPublica released all of this information to the general public, they clearly turned to an Intuit spokesperson for answers to their detailed questions. Not at all shockingly, the spokesperson declined, but they did provide a cute little statement that read in part, "'We continuously innovate to offer products and services that give customers complete confidence that they will receive every dollar they deserve. This innovation is found in the products we offer, both free and paid, as well as in the software we have contributed to the IRS free file program for 20 years. Intuit voluntarily supports FreeFile as part of our philanthropic efforts to help millions of taxpayers who need it the most. And that's a bit of a yikes on trikes. So where exactly do I start? Okay, first things first, you very clearly do not voluntarily support the program if you're instructing people to steer consumers away from it. Also saying that this was a philanthropic effort is just laughable. It wasn't out of the kindness of your hearts that you started the program. It was just to save your own asses from being completely obliterated by a government program that would actually (gasps) help the American people. You and I clearly have very different definitions of philanthropy. Usually when I think of it, I think of people or organizations doing something to actually benefit the general public of their own volition. Not an organization that's doing something to ensure their company survives as a compromise or because they were told to by the government. I guess it's just two different ways of thinking. Over 70% of taxpayers in the United States qualify for the free file program, by the way. But in 2020, only a shocking 3% of people actually used it. It's not entirely difficult to figure out why when you look at this. Now, I'm not saying it's all into its fault, but when you spend a decent amount of time trying to make sure people don't use the free service that they were supposed to offer, then that definitely seems just a tiny bit fishy. The statement gets even funnier when they say that their company proudly and transparently advocates for the interest of the taxpayer. Considering that's demonstrably untrue, it's a little bit troubling to see it in a statement, but hey, PR is PR and they have to spin the narrative to make themselves look good. I get it, that's their job. But unfortunately for them, it didn't work the way they so clearly hoped it would. An abundance of news sources picked up the story from ProPublica and spread it like wildfire. Soon, it wasn't just the news talking about it, but it was governing bodies talking too. And suddenly lawsuits came flooding in from every direction and it definitely began to look like TurboTax might just drown. In July of last year, Intuit announced that it would no longer be participating in the Free File Alliance. Not an entirely shocking announcement after they were discovered to have basically done everything in their power to not adhere to it for years. Following the ProPublica article's release, the IRS presented a new tax filing system that adamantly prevented companies from doing, well, basically everything TurboTax had been accused of doing. No more messing with Google searches and the IRS would now be allowed to create its own filing system. You know, the one that Intuit prevented from happening about 13 years ago. Intuit even publicly supported the new changes. This was likely because they knew something bad was coming and it certainly was. Just a short while later, the FTC and all 50 states came sweeping in to punish the company for what they had done. After a thorough investigation by the attorneys general, the United States government discovered that everything ProPublica had released to the public was in fact true. The unfair advertising practices, Google search manipulation, and selling products to everyone regardless of if they needed it, all of that was true. In May of this year, Intuit and TurboTax finally reached an agreement with all 50 states plus the District of Columbia. Of course, as with most settlements, they admitted no wrongdoing and said the settlement would come with minimal impact to its business. This is most certainly true because these lawsuits came far too late. Honestly, Intuit is probably in the category of too big to fail and a tiny settlement just makes them change a couple things. It's not really going to make big impacts though. As the settlement was announced, Carrie McLean into its executive vice president and general counsel released the following statement. Intuit is clear and fair with its customers, including with the nearly 100 million Americans who filed their taxes free of charge with our products over the last eight years, more than all other tax prep software companies combined. Forgive me for speculating here, but maybe it wasn't that they were clear and fair that brought in so many customers. Maybe it was the constant ads that said everything was free when it really wasn't. Of course, that's just me speculating and throwing in my silly little opinion here. But all in all, the settlement came with an abundance of requirements for the companies, and now they would finally have to change their ways. If Intuit and TurboTax want to advertise their product as being free, they have to clearly disclose that there may be some limitations to their free products and that not all consumers will qualify to use it. 
Additionally, they have to actually provide a link to the free products, you know, instead of hiding it from the public. Their handy little strategy of stifling Google searches is also dead and gone. Now you have to be able to find it. Then there's the money issue. Clearly their practices cost millions of Americans their hard-earned cash. So there's certainly some debt to be paid. And as it turns out, that debt's quite a large number. Intuit agreed to pay $141 million in the settlement. After steering approximately 4.4 million customers in the wrong direction, some of their money is finally being paid back. So when all is said and done, this type of settlement amounts to $90 a piece per person. For the States, even though the company didn't admit fault, this settlement was upheld as a massive victory. Letitia James, the attorney general of New York who led the investigation released a statement claiming victory saying, for years Intuit misled the most vulnerable among us to make a profit. Today, every state in the nation is holding Intuit accountable for scamming millions of taxpayers. And we're putting millions of dollars back into the pockets of impact Americans. By all accounts, this settlement seemed like a win-win. Even Intuit seemed to feel like it was the best option for them, saying that they had reaffirmed its commitment to providing Americans with free tax preparation and filing. But it doesn't mean that the legal trouble for the company is all said and done. They still have an FTC lawsuit to face, even after their executive vice president said that the FTC litigations were extremely unnecessary after the settlement with the states. In March of this year, the FTC announced that they would be taking action against Intuit and TurboTax and issuing an administrative complaint against the company. For them, the deceptive and bogus advertisements had gone too far and had reached the threshold of being illegally deceptive. Samuel Levine, the director of the Bureau of Consumer Protection wrote in the complaint, TurboTax is bombarding consumers with ads for free tax filing services and then hitting them with charges when it's time to file. We are asking a court to immediately halt this bait and switch and to protect taxpayers at the peak of filing season. Intuit decided to actually comment back and they admitted everything. I'm just, I'm just fucking with you. That's not what happened at all. Did I fool you there for a second? I tried to sound kind of serious, but no. In their actual response, they called the FTC's arguments simply not credible and say that they weren't steering people away from free services. In fact, they claim they have steered more of the American people to file for free than they ever had before. They put in all of the effort to make sure that American citizens knew about the free file program. Now, of course, when you take a look at their internal documents, those seem to suggest the complete opposite, but this is of course what they claimed and it seemed like it might've worked. One month later, a US judge decided not to block the company from running their ads because of the risk of future harm. Judge Charles Breyer said the FTC attorneys had been naive and simply outlawed by the Intuit team after they purposefully drew out the lawsuit to ensure that the hearing took place after tax season. So yeah, we won't block them from running deceptive ads because the damage has already been done. How fucking fabulous. Obviously, Intuit seemed thrilled by this decision, but it wasn't over. Following the original litigation, the FTC decided to put a stay on the lawsuit to grapple with whether continuing the lawsuit would be in the best interest of the American public. And as it turned out, they decided it was, and in August, they voted four to one to continue with litigation. I haven't been able to find a recent update on the topic, but I'm sure there will be more. Now, meanwhile, there's something else going on that certainly raised a few eyebrows, and that's Intuit and TurboTax's data practices and the fact that they're definitely becoming a monopoly. And before we take a look at that, I'm just gonna take a moment to thank today's sponsors. It's the most festive time of year, and HelloFresh is here to help make the most of every moment. From holiday hosting to dinners during busy weeknights, you can count on HelloFresh to deliver fresh ingredients and seasonal recipes. HelloFresh's festive eats make mealtime a snap. Choose from holiday inspired dinner recipes, seasonal add-ons, or even a three course offering, all designed to make holiday meals extra yummy and easier than ever. So it doesn't matter if you're hosting a holiday party or just stocking up on snacks, you'll find everything you need at the HelloFresh market. From quick breakfast to charcuterie boards and desserts, it's never been easier to prep for a party or fill your pantry. And might I add, since it is full-blown soup season to try their coconut curry cream soup, it is absolutely amazing. I know they have a variation where I believe it's vegetarian and they have an option where I think you can add turkey into it. And I've done the veggie version and it's so delicious. So if you're ready to skip those trips to the grocery store and get cooking with HelloFresh, make sure you use our code, which is hellofresh.com slash casket18, code casket18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. 
Again, that's hellofresh.com slash casket18. Use code casket18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. This episode is also sponsored by PayPal Honey, the easiest way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Now, as the holiday season is getting closer and closer, some would argue we're already in the full swing of it right now, but shopping for holiday gifts can get just a little bit trickier. We don't know where the deals are and at what time, because it seems like companies are throwing deals left and right, but it's at random times and they're not all synced and coordinated. So it makes it a little bit tricky when you're doing your holiday shopping to maximize every dollar that you have. Imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites. When you go to checkout, the Honey button appears. All you have to do is click apply coupons, wait a few seconds as Honey is searching for coupons that it can find. And if it finds a working coupon, you'll watch prices drop. And it's super easy and it works on all sorts of different like companies and websites. It doesn't matter if you're shopping for clothes, tech, gadgets, even a holiday pizza, maybe for your D&D group, not saying specifically that's what I've done, but uh, thanks for the 20% off coupon there. But it's super easy to use and it just kind of sits in the background and minds its business until it's time to check out. So if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. And I'd never recommend something that I don't use. So get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash casket. Again, that's joinhoney.com slash casket. In November, 2020, the US government became aware that Intuit was planning to make a massive purchase, Credit Karma. The company, which ballooned in popularity by offering consumers the ability to check their credit scores for free, was just one of the multiple purchases planned by Intuit, who seemed to be on their way to creating a Silicon Valley financial technology company for the ages. For the US government, this wasn't exactly the best news and they swiftly brought a civil antitrust action to the forefront in an attempt to stop the deal from going through. In the complaint, the government alleges that the purchase could result in a monopoly for the tax preparation sector. Since both companies participate in tax filing for the American people, the government was concerned that this new merger could result in a significant price increase, something that obviously the US government has been trying to avoid in regards to taxes for quite some time. Capitalism relies on competition, but companies aren't usually too fond of other companies participating in the same selling practices as them, so they just buy them. The federal government stepping in during these types of purchases isn't anything new. We saw it with companies like Comcast, but they seem to very rarely win. And this time was unfortunately no different. By December, Intuit had announced that they had bought Credit Karma through a combination of cash and stock for $7.1 billion. And that is one hell of an acquisition. And of course, they were thrilled. This new merger would allow them to help the 62% of consumers who were living paycheck to paycheck, the 75% of Americans who consistently had concerns about how they were going to pay their bills every month, and of course, the 33% of people who lost their jobs during the pandemic. Now you could do everything with them. You could do your taxes, check your credit score, send your invoices, apply for credit cards, anything and pretty much everything through one company. This was the dream according to Sasan Gudrazi, the CEO of Intuit. In a statement, they said, We're thrilled to begin our journey together to create a mobile personal financial assistant for consumers to help solve their most pressing financial problems. Together, we will help consumers achieve financial success with confidence by helping them find the right financial products, put more money in their pockets and provide financial expertise and advice. But while Intuit seemed to be jumping up and down in excitement over their new deal, other people weren't quite as thrilled. Considering Intuit's history of lobbying the government and allegedly lying to the American people, this isn't incredibly shocking, but those things weren't actually the main concern. The key issue now was that Intuit had access to an astounding assortment of customer data, and for any company, that usually raises a few red flags. Shortly after the announcement, a piece in the New York Times claimed that, quote, the acquisition underscores the value of the financial data of ordinary Americans. You see, Credit Karma holds about 2,600 data points on each one of its customers. And obviously that's a lot. With Credit Karma and Intuit merging together, the company now holds a vast majority of the American public's financial information. As regulators grow more concerned about security and the privacy of consumer data, this could cause some issues in the future, especially since banks are starting to become more and more hesitant about sharing information with companies like Credit Karma. Sure, this data could be simply used to get you better deals on credit cards, loans, et cetera, but it could also be used to benefit corporate bottom lines, something that has happened quite a few times. For example, an investigation into Allstate found that the company had been pressuring regulators in Maryland to allow them to create a pricing algorithm that would use financial data to develop auto insurance quotes that would squeeze more money out of the biggest spenders rather than just create a quote based on the risk of the driver or the car. Obviously, this could be quite concerning when it comes to Intuit. 
They've already been accused of steering customers towards their paying products, and now they have even more financial data than ever before. It's entirely possible they could use that to influence their marketing in a brand new way. Of course, for now, this is all just speculation, but it's certainly something to think about. The concern with Intuit's data protection grew when the company announced to 1.4 million small businesses that they would be sharing payroll information with Equifax in 2021. Businesses had the option to opt out, but this new announcement certainly caused some concern since Equifax has a history of sharing data with debt collectors and also exposed the financial and personal data of 145.5 million people in 2017. Sure, most companies have more data on us than we'll ever know. And as Kristen Johnson, professor at Tulane Law School puts it, there's no business person on the planet who doesn't want to get access to consumer financial transaction details. That is a pot of gold. But that doesn't make it any less concerning, especially when it's a company with a relatively shady history gathering it. However, what's done is done and the deal is complete. So for now, the lawsuits, the lobbying, and the mergers haven't seemed to slow into it down in the slightest. As they continue to grow, they seem to gain more and more customers by the second. Hopefully they've learned their lesson and will start being honest about what's really happening with their tax filings and maybe have some transparency about what they're doing behind closed doors with the US government. But that just seems like a lot to hope for and it may just be wishful thinking. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's episode of The Corporate Casket. I hope you learned something new here today. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest information. I wanna thank you for spending some of your time here with me today, and I'll see you in the future. Bye.